In this session, we're going to talk about the arithmetic functions. We will start with the iterative combinational circuits. Then we will move to binary adders, namely half adders and full adders and ripple carry adders. And then we will talk about binary operations, binary subtraction, binary adder subtractor circuits. Then we will see the binary multiplication and finally other useful arithmetic functions such as the design by contraction etc. Okay. The arithmetic functions operate on binary vectors. That's the idea. Normally we used to do bitwise operations but okay if you do it on vectors then uh, we will be dealing with the, uh, the uh, large numbers okay we can represent them and uh, these will create the basics of arithmetic logic units in your processors uh, so in these functions you use the same sum function in each bit position that's the idea so you create some uh, meaningful blocks for bitwise operation and you repeat those blocks uh, many times in order to achieve the vector operation and those uh, sub-function blocks are called cells, uh, that's it. And uh, the iterative array is an array of interconnected cells. So you can skate them, to, uh, like uh, you connect them together and you will have your iterative array. An iterative array can be in single dimension or can be in multiple dimensions, both possible. It's Okay. Here you see an example of the block diagram of a uh, single dimensional iterative array where you have how many cells here uh, up to, from 0 to uh, n minus 1, uh, namely it's uh, 31. So you will have 32 cells here. Uh, what is the number of inputs here? For each cell, see we have two inputs and you will have uh, 64 inputs in this sense. And you have this one as input and this one as an extra input here. These are not counted because those are within the box, right? If you, if you put this in a box, in a circuit box here, that's what we're talking about. These are interconnections. We don't count them. They're for messaging between the cells. But what we have here, uh, if you see it as a box, you have... 66 plus 2 you will have 66 input uh, inputs here and how many truth table rows do you have here past the video and think about it and then 2 to the power 66 right and those equations will have up to again 66 uh, input variables all of them can, uh, can exist and of course and it can have lots and lots of terms here if you want to have a design like this, if you have a structure like this, like you're doing 32-bit addition or something like this, designing in this sense is not practical. You can see it directly from here. If you design it in an iterative array manner, it, it, so uh, it would be a feasible design that, that can be applicable, uh, that you can design much easier. Now let's take a look at the basic functional block which is called addition. The binary addition is used frequently because you can represent subtraction as an addition, right? Subtraction is what? Take the inverse and add it and like uh, what is multiplication? Uh, multi uh, adding multiple times and what is division? Subtracting multiple times which is taking the inverse and adding it multiple times that's it so binary addition is very important and very basic here you have your half adder is a two input bitwise addition functional block you don't have a carrying input here and if you consider the carrying input as well so you will have a three input bitwise additional functional block which is called the full adder and the ripple carry adder is an iterative array to perform the binary addition that's it so you, you interconnect those cells and you will have your ripple carry adder and there is also a carry look ahead adder structure here to uh, improve the performance 
and we will discuss it later. Now let's take a look at the functional block uh, help adder uh, a bit in detail. It's a two input, uh, one bit width binary adder that performs the following computations. You see two inputs here and you will have your sum and you will have your carry out here. You see you, you make the summations here and only in this one you produce the carry out. I think you remember this from our uh, first chapter, I guess, where we uh, introduced our binary um, arithmetics, right? So, uh, I mean, if you're having trouble, you can go, go back and review, but that's the idea. And uh, what, what would be the uh, truth, corresponding truth table here? Namely this one, okay? So, as you see, you can represent C, carry and some outputs within this sense. You, you can say that this one is XOR and this one is your AND gate, right? Uh, they, they're the most basic view. So if you do a K map, if you can see it, uh, other, anyway, you can see that your sum is your XOR gate uh, between the inputs and your carry is, uh, carry out is X and Y. That's it. We can represent it in other ways as well. So this one is the, the, the most, I think, uh, common one that we use, but there are, of, of course, other representations here. This one is also possible. So uh, as you see, this one is sum of products form, and this one is product of sums form. It's directly equal. And uh, you will have your XOR representation here in E. And in C, uh, this one, we will have carry as uh, term in the sum and that's it and he will you will have C not as a term in the sum as well these are just different implementations different representations all of them are doing this the same thing in this half adder okay as we just said the, the, the most common one is this one and its uh, circuitry looks like this and if you want to implement an end only one uh, using the universal gate NAND and it would look like this not surprising you will have your NAND gate and an inverter in it here you see this one would be your carry out for example now this is all about the half adder we also see we have also seen its uh, basic circuit as well what about the full adder a full adder is pretty similar to a half adder but we just have an extension, we just have an extra input, which is called the carry in bit. See this, this layer or this row here. You see this is your carry in is, which is coming from your neighbor. So in this sense, you make the necessary additions like this and, and uh, you just, uh, of course you will have now uh, eight different combinations, right? So if your carry input is one, you will have all of these and uh, you will have your carry out again and sum again. And that's it. This is how we make the operations on binary uh, level. And if you take a look at its truth table, it would look like this. And for carry out, you will have a truth table or K map. And for uh, sum, you, will, you can have another the truth table again. You see, this one is pretty obvious, which is what your uh, uh, XOR, your, you see this uh, checkerboard pattern here, che checkerboard pattern here, this will remind you that it is either an XOR or XNOR gate, but since there uh, it's an uh, OT function, you can say that it's, it's XOR here. So, uh, and th this one is what it is uh, X, Z, Y, Z, and uh, that's it. You can uh, see here X, X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z here. This is your carry out, and your sum is like this, but you can easily represent it like this. This is more meaningful. Of course, this is equivalent to this one, but that's, uh, that's easy to understand. And you can also write uh, this one, this one, you see, if your Z is one, if your X or Y is one, if either one of them is one, that's enough. You will have your output, that's it. So you can also represent it like this so that you can use this part again right here. 
you can represent your carry out like this too. If you represent your carry out like this, then they will have some pretty names. This is your sum, this is your carry out, this is your carry generate, your carry is generated directly by the inputs, and this is your carry propagate, which takes Z into consideration. It's a very, very lovely one because uh, you see, so this is, if you focus on uh, this uh, end here, so this is your carry generate. So your carry out is ob originating from directly from your inputs. And if you take into consideration your carry in as well, so it is called the carry propagate because it's coming from the, it is uh, originating from its uh, previous operation. That's why it's called carry propagate. If you want to implement this uh, as a circuitry, what you have here, okay, you see this one is your uh, carry, this one is your carry generate, you see, A, B. Either this one will be one or your carry propagate, okay, with XOR, this one is propagate is uh, like uh, ended with your carry in, either this way you can have carry out. If either one of them is one, you will have your carry out as one. That's it. And what is your what is your sum here? It is directly x xor y xor z. You see, uh, or I'm sorry, a xor b xor uh, c. So you see, a xor b xor c. So we cascade them, and we will have it. And you can easily represent it like this. Okay, just forget about it. Your uh, carry i plus one is your ti i plus i c i. This is how we generate our carry uh, carry out. Now uh, binary adders are. Uh, created to uh, add multiple operands here, we bundle those signals together into vectors and use the these functional blocks over and over again. You can consider this as a functional block over and over again to operate on binary vectors. What you have here is your 4-bit ripple carry adder, you see. You have your OGNT addend, OGNT first number, second number added together and your carry ends right here see carry in level here your first carry in is what it is zero it's okay it's your because they are full adders you will have this but these are generated from those operations one plus one is zero and you gen you generate this carry then one plus one plus one is one and you generate this carry and one plus zero plus zero is zero uh, one and you generate no carry whatever okay so this is how you generate uh, your carry out in the end. That's, that, that's it. So uh, this is how we uh, do it. Finally, you will have your carry out in the end. That's it. Uh, so uh, it will be your carry out. But of course, these ones are happening, occurring uh, between the uh, uh, interconnected cells. So its structure is like this. Maybe it's it's more clear here. See that this is your carry in, uh, and if you pack this in a box, if you put this in a box, you see. So you will have your two numbers here, namely your A input, and this is your B input. Okay, they will be added together bitwise. That's it, and the generated carries are the carry in of the next your neighbor then this carry out is again your neighbors carry in and like this and so on and finally this would be your carry out this looks lovely okay this is called the 4-bit ripple carry binary adder but you can see that there's a problem here that each one of them is uh, waiting uh, the other op uh, the previous neighbor's operation to be finished. So in this sense, 
we rely on care look ahead generators and we will discuss this later in the lecture.